Hey guys, and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. Today we're going to be talking about the big books on my TBR. Now, I have seen videos like this floating around booktube for the past couple of months, and they really inspired me to take a look at my own TBR and see if I've been putting off the bigger books on my shelves. And I can say right now, yes, yes I have. However, just now when I sat down to pull books for this video, I realized that part of the problem um, that comes with talking about big books is that you have to define what the heck a big book is. For example, if you compare something like Ruth Ezeki's All Over Creation to something like The Crimson Petal and the White, this doesn't look so big in comparison. This is just over 400 pages and I could see a lot of people considering this to be um, less of a big book and more of a medium-sized book. However, this is one of those penguin books with really thin pages and really small font and Based on my reading speed, I think this could definitely be considered a big book. So that's not really what I'm going to be talking about in this video, but I guess that's just a question I have for you guys. What do you consider to be a big book and is it related to just pages or is it related to your reading speed as well? Now I do think that we can all agree that a book over 500 pages definitely counts as a big book. So the rest of the books here that I have to show you guys are um, at least 500 pages and um, a lot of them are quite a bit more. So to go from smallest to largest, the first big book on my TBR is J.K. Rowling's Occasional words, man. The first big book on my TBR is J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, which weighs in at a um, relatively doable 503 pages. Now, I have somehow been able to avoid all talk about The ca Casual Vacancy. I don't know anything about it, and I'm actually planning on adding this one to my winter TBR, which you guys will see in a couple of weeks. I'm really not sure why I haven't picked this one up quite yet because um, I really don't actually feel that intimidated by it. I think because it's JK Rowling and because I know that I grew up reading her incredibly long books, so I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. If it's, a, if it's an author that you are more familiar with, do their larger works intimidate you less? Then with a very close page count, we have Michael Scott's Tom Kringle's Log, which is 511 pages. Now I've had this on my shelf for a very, very long time. I believe I got it when I was going into high school, maybe the end of middle school, and I have actually read about 100 pages of this before and then just kind of got stuck and stopped. This was definitely a case of wrong book, same title, uh, because I was looking for a book that I had read as a young kid called Tom Kringle's Log, thought I found it, and when this came in the mail, um, I realized that this was definitely not what I was expecting. This is about a young man named Tom Kringle who joins the British Royal Navy at the age of 13, and I believe just follows his adventures growing up as a sailor in the Queen's Navy. Then I have Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, which weighs in at 529 pages, and I really don't feel too bad about um, not picking this one up yet because I just actually got this last month. Then I have Deja Dead by Kathy Rikes, which weighs in at 532 pages, so not too far off of the last book, but this one is a mass market paperback, and that begs the question, how do you factor in the book size into how long your books are? So mass market paperbacks tend to be smaller books than, say, a standard paperback, and therefore that means that the pages are smaller, they can fit less, less text per page, so they have to have more pages. For some reason, when it comes to mass market paperbacks, they really have some weird pull over me. Something about a petite, long book really makes me want to pick it up, and that's actually why I picked up um, The Girl with the Dragon, the Dragon Tattoo when I did, because I was looking at the airport for what could I possibly read, and it, I wasn't at all phased by the fact that this one is over 600 pages. Now, I also got this one fairly recently, so that is why I haven't gotten to it yet, but I also don't really feel intimidated by this one, I think because it's crime fiction and because crime fiction tends to be um, more fast-paced, more gripping, and harder to put down. So yeah, for some reason that makes this massive looking book feel less intimidating. Of course, that is not the only mass market paperback on my TBR. I also have Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, which was forced on me by my best friend. I kept handing her more literary books and classics, and she was like, okay, you know what? I get to recommend something to you now. I want you to read this. Now, I am incredibly intimidated by this one, mainly because um, from what I understand, yes, it is historical fiction, but it also is very romance heavy, and that is not something I generally go out of my way to read. I'm not 
a, a very romantic person in my everyday life either so um, sorry book it's not just you so this one is about 850 pages Ah, uh, I, I am. I'm very intimidated by this one. And lo and behold, we have another romance that I am incredibly, incredibly intimidated by, and that is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. I believe this is the first book in a series. I could be totally wrong, but I saw this for the first time on Cat or Catriona's channel, The Little Book Owl, and she raved about this as a great historical fiction set in Russia, which is not something I have read before and which really intrigued me. So when I saw this in the bargain book box at uh, Green Apple Books in San Francisco. It was like two dollars. I kind of had to pick it up. Then I got home, read the back, and realized that holy crap you just bought a romance. You don't read romance. Romance isn't something up your street. And then I never picked it up. I would put a call out to you guys. Have you read this? Is it worth a read even if I'm not huge on romance? Or should I just give this one away? Oh and this one is 894 pages. Then I have a book I mentioned briefly earlier, Michelle Faber's The Crimson Petal and the white. This one is also 894 pages and like most of you uh, probably I heard about this for the first time on Jen Campbell's channel. This is historical fiction set in Victorian London and follows a prostitute who would really love to change her life situation. Because Jen speaks so highly of it I'm really expecting to enjoy it but that being said I have mentioned this before, I'm not a very fast reader, and I know that if I choose to pick this up in a month, it has to be in a month that I am not expecting to get a lot of reading done otherwise. And then the last book on my TBR is one that I'm actually currently reading, and that is James Mishner's Hawaii. Now this one, this one breaks the scale, you guys. It weighs in at a whopping 1,131 pages. I very ambitiously put this one on my fall TBR with the disclaimer that I knew I was not going to get remotely close to finishing it in fall. Um, I am currently 23 pages through. This is basically a grand historical look at Hawaii. It starts off with the literal creation of the Hawaiian Islands and right now I'm reading about I guess some Aboriginal um, people. I know this is a book that both my parents really loved when they were my age so that's kind of what's fueling me to read this and I think I'm gonna try and make a big push to read this one over my uh, Christmas vacation. So those are all of the big books on my TBR and I have been through a couple of uh, shelf purges in the past year and they've all survived those purges so I'm obviously very interested in getting to them eventually but because I am a slower reader I know that if I pick one of these up I will have to let go of some of my other reading and that I think is what's holding me back from actually getting to them. Of course I would love to know what you guys think about reading big books especially if you are a relatively slow reader like myself but otherwise that is all I have for today's video so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you're having a fantastic day and are enjoying vlogmas and I will see you tomorrow. Bye! all over crea creation by Di Diana, I can't say her name.